Coming up next on Kiss My Collectibles, we welcome back Keith Valcourt. One more kiss? Be sure and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay up to date when we post new episodes. Uh, kiss my collectibles podcast but you knew that hello everyone welcome to the next episode of kiss my collectibles your source for vinyl toys bootlegs and more i am one of your co-hosts jason herndon and with me as always is andrew scampati how you doing andrew i'm, I'm deliriously happy i bet you are so <laughs> deliriously happy. Uh, and joining us today uh back to the show is uh keith valcourt keith valcourt is the global project manager hey where is he now the, <laughs> the global project manager at rhino records and for the gene simmons vault and keith was with us uh just shortly after the vault launched right andrew yeah and, and he was actually with us audio only so this is the first audio? time we got a yep. got a face to face uh, yes, well, yeah. i got all the i got the new plastic surgery so I'm yeah. not, <laughs> right he, he got all that money from the vault and was like i can't oh, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, good job yeah thanks so we're just going to uh, chat with Keith, and you know it's been what eight, nine months, not, almost ten months now since we've the, since the vault started, and we've had a, a lot of events happen. Gene's been ar around the world doing this thing, and so we just want to touch base with Keith and find out what's going on, how this thing is going to wrap up, some of the experiences, all yeah. just touch on all sorts of different things. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so as of the recording of this show today, there are two actual vault experiences left. December 1st in Los... Uh, there's four? There's okay. four left. You, you have uh, the first weekend in October, October 6th and 7th in Fort Wayne, Indiana at Sweetwater. Uh, yeah, well, yes, I was going to mention that after because I know there's two that's, dates on that. Yeah, so that, that's, that's like the vault on steroids. Then you have the vault experience on the Kiss Cruise. Right. Which we'll be doing. And then you have Los Angeles and Las Vegas after that. Yes, and and for anyone who has already purchased the vault or who had went to any of the first two Las Vegas experiences or even the very first uh, LA kickoff, this applies to anyone that's purchased the vault. They do have a frequent buyers program, which you can get all the cool things included in the vault experience and not another vault because I know some of you guys don't want another end table. <coughs> So one might be good enough. So uh, go to Gene. Mike Wren does. He's Mike got... Wren has four. I believe Mike Wren has the record. He may have four. Uh, and then there's also Harry um, from Australia, Harry F., who I can't pronounce his last name, although he's lovely and uh, we, we hang out in every city in Australia. M Harry might have four as well at this point. So there's a, there's a competition going on between the two of them to, yeah. to be vault, to have the most vaults. Have the most yeah. vaults. Mike but, is a good friend of yeah. Andrew and I. So, yeah. uh, He's been on the show a bunch of times, too. Yeah, yeah. We uh, yeah. rib him about how many, how many more damn vaults are you going to buy, but, Mike? Yeah, and you know, but you know what? He had Gene sign on either the second or the third one. Can I, can I swear, first of all? Can oh, I, yes, sure, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So on, the, on either the second and the third one, he actually asked Gene to sign this. So Gene wrote, Mike, how many of these fucking things do you need? <laughs> Gene yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 listen. Everyone has what they, as we all know from a collector standpoint, you have what you collect, and he's he's a giant fan. So, God bless him. He wants four. Let it, let him have four. Sure, why not? He wants he wants six. We can give him two more. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so, but anyway, just to just to hark back to the the Vault Frequent Buyers Program, it's a thousand bucks, and you basically get all of the things except the actual vault. You get a picture with Gene, right. a brief meet and greet with Gene, one item signed. Um, and uh, you get to see the songs and stories, which is always the most fun part for me. But uh, head along to GeneSimmonsVault.com to see that. But if you were a vault buyer, you already should have gotten the email um, about right. it because I, I know I already did. Yeah, every vault buyer got an email. We wanted to have, you know, there were so many vault buyers that came back and said, I love being the experience. You know, I, I love the vault. I love the music, what have you. But I love being the experience. I want to go to another experience, but I can't afford another vault. So, I, you know, I sat with Gene and we we're like, how can we find a way to invite people to come? And Gene said, well, invite them, you know, give them a discount, have them come in and they get to hang out. They get to get the photo op, they get an autograph and they get to be part of it. Now, I want to I want to make something clear. Uh, you know, if you bought the vault for L.A. or Vegas, and you actually it's your first time you get priority. You will get a better seat. You will get a lower number to meet Gene. 
I don't want anyone who's, oh, wait a minute, I spent two grand and I'm going to get the shaft. No, no. You get your, you're in there first. And then the frequent buyers, you know, it's like a big party and they get to be part of it as well. And they'll get their photo op and autograph after everyone who bought the ball that day will get it. So you guys are going to line them up after the other people when you're yeah, lining up to yeah, get the event. Exactly. Everyone's yeah. everyone, you know, when you check in, because I know Andrew, you've been in a vault event. You, I've you been get, to a vault event. And you as well. So yeah, when you yeah. check in, you, so you get wristbands, you get numbers. And the way we've been doing of these events, it's whoever shows up first gets number one. We're going to do it a little differently this time. We're going to have it a little bit more regulated to make sure that the vault buyers themselves are going to get the low numbers. You know, so you don't have to. And we tell everybody, it's like you don't have to show up at 630 in the morning if we tell you the event starts at 11. Uh, you know, people will still sit on this. I remember the New York events the day Peter Chris was there. Uh, I got up at seven and I went out for a walk in the morning and there were already people lined up and we weren't letting people into something like 1130. But there were already people sitting on the sidewalk. So some people want to be first, but just uh, uh, FYI, it, just because you're standing outside first doesn't mean you're going to get in for, first as far as the placement and the seating. And everything. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we, we, which is very cool. I mean, you know, both Jason and I had almost the royal treatment at both of the vault experiences that we went to. Everything was handled uh, really great. So, so uh, again, if you haven't done it, if you're on the fence, I know we've said it so many times, you, you really got to go. I mean, we're getting down to the wire here. Uh, as a recording of this show, KISS has announced the end of the road tour. So we don't know what's, um, what's next. Uh, so I, I want to kick this off first, and I want to ask a question that you've probably been asked many, many times. Uh, is there going to be a Vault 2? And if there has been, what have you talked about? No, I mean, look, the, the reality is there's enough material to be a Vault tour. But as you just mentioned, KISS did announce the, the, the end of the road tour. Next year, the following year, and potentially the third year, is all going to be about KISS. We were very lucky in this year where Gene had a year off, if you will. I, 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 and in Gene's standards, that you know, a year off is funny because he never takes a moment to breathe and take time off. But he had a year where KISS wasn't that active, and, he, and he, we could make this project a reality. We worked with him last year to put it all together, and this was the year we got the time to get out on the road and really bring it to the people. Um, will there be a Vault 2? The material's there, uh, but I think that if you see a Vault 2, it may be more something KISS-related. It may be less of a solo venture. Um, you know, obviously, with the band going and doing this farewell tour, there's going to be a lot of interest, and maybe the combination of the Vault 1 being as successful as it was and KISS being out on the road might motivate them to do some sort of a KISS Vault. Um, you know, we certainly, being in business with Gene for this year has been great, uh, but we certainly would welcome if he wanted to do other projects, but there's been no official planning of a vault to, to there's been no discussion. You know, I said, like I said, I know the material's there because there are about 50 or 60 songs that we didn't put on the vault for one reason or another. And I know Paul recently posted something on his Facebook of some old tapes he found of other songs. Oh, so, yeah. I mean... Uh, not, we're not planning a Vault 2. Vault two. I would love, as a fan, I love a Vault 2. Obviously, Andrew, you and I have talked about Stanley the Parrot. You know, yes. A good version of that needs yes. to show up somewhere on yes. CD. You know, an official release of that. Um, well, you know, we'll see. But we're, we're Ryan Elm and, and uh, Gene, and we're not planning a Vault 2 at this moment in time. Yeah, yeah. I that mean, it, it, it's it, it, yeah, it's it, it's really interesting to see how this kind of all took place because uh, for those listeners that don't know, Kiss is not signed to Rhino Records. Uh, there was a deal that that was struck that w that Gene was able to do and release Kiss material within the context of Gene Solo. So uh, just to kind of give a peek uh, to people who who don't work in the music business like Jason or have knowledge like like myself, um, what type of what would be if Kiss were to do a vault, and if Kiss were to s decide to do it with Rhino? What are the first steps? Like, how how do you get how do you get Kiss into a vault? Well, if Kiss were to do a vault, first of all, Kiss has a deal with Universal Music, which okay. isn't Rhino is part of the Warner Music Group. We're competitors, if you will. Yes. yes. Uh, so back in the day, there used to be six major record distribution houses, and That's now true. it's down to th it's three. Yeah. And so, so if Kiss were to evolve, it would be through Universal Music. The only way that, you know, Gene came to, I, I don't know the, the history of Universal, but Gene came to a few people over the years to try and do this evolve, which we ended up doing, because um, Gene owns the material. Because it's technically, though there are tracks on there that became Kiss songs, and there are demos, it was technically Gene material. It's mm -hmm. material that Gene 
technically own. So that's why we did Gene Simmons Vault. Oh, if history do a vault, it's a whole other. They, they, Universal would have to go through all these things. All the guys, past and present, would have to be involved in signing off things. It would be a lot more work. You know, the beauty of the vault was, yeah. was like, hey, I have all these things. I want to release this th thing, you know, in one way, shape, or form. And that made it easier. A Kiss Vault is definitely going to have to be, Universal is going to be involved, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a lot more work. That's why, per, you know, personally, I don't see Rhino doing a Kiss Vault. Mm -hmm. If Universal does, that would be amazing. Right, because it's my understanding with my, you know, music business degree and the 25 years I've worked in the music business, you know, uh, the contract that they would have been under with Casablanca, uh, anything that, that they recorded, including demos, would be owned by, by the record label unless it was stated otherwise within the contract. There, there's a there's a limit to those original contracts, and I don't know. And again, I don't know the specifics of the Universal contract that followed, but there's a limit to, to there, there was a limit around it. And legally, Gene owned a lot of stuff that you know. Again, the stuff that ended up on the vault, Gene sure. owned it, so that's why we were able to right. to do it. And right. obviously dealing with one person is significantly easier than having to deal with other record companies, right. even other co-writers who still want their, you know, their cheddar cheese. The well, exactly. And, you, and, and, and former band members who may yeah. or may not have, you know, good or bad feelings, whatever. Yes. It was, it's a lot easier with, you know, to deal with Gene. And also his vision is focused. Yes. You know, when you're dealing with a band with two leaders and other people who have opinions, your vision, one person's vision is, I want to do this. The other person's vision, well, I don't want to do it. I want to do this. And that's, you know, that's sometimes why it takes forever for projects and reissues and so forth to come out if you're dealing with a band, as opposed to if you're dealing with an individual, especially someone as decisive as Gene, who's like, this is my vision. This is what I want to do. You know, can we do this? Yeah. So when we, when we last talked to you, uh, I think you only had done one vault experience and it was wow. a, as a great learning experience for, for you guys just to see what does work and what doesn't work. I think initially it was, you get your vault first and then it was songs and stories. So you had people kind of, right. you know, like, you know, loitering all day. So just kind of g give us maybe a 30,000 foot view. How did Los Angeles, you know, January, 2018 differ from when you guys were just in Australia? 2018. Well, Australia was totally different because Australia, the four vault experiences were based around the Gene Simmons band live shows. Mm -hmm. right. So we didn't have songs and stories in Australia. Oh. We didn't have luxury of that. We didn't have the ability to do that because scheduling didn't allow it. They were back to back to back. So what we had, what we try to do with every vault is, you know, we have a model for the way we want it to be, but then with everything, we find a way to kind of customize it to the city. Because, you know, not everything would be the same. So Australia, we're like, okay, we don't have time for songs and stories. It's just not going to fit in with the scheduling. But there's sound check. And, oh, by the way, who's the special guest on this tour? But Ace Fraley. So that allowed us to go, okay, Australia, you're not going to get songs and stories. But you're going to get to come to sound check. And you're the only people in sound check. We had, you know, these sound check, you had like 45, 50 people, 60 people, 100 people. They were all be related to the vault. So you not only you get to see the band sound check, you get to see Ace sound check. And oh, by the way, Ace has agreed that after sound check, he's going to sit over there at a table. And if you want to take pictures and sign autographs, Ace is going to be there as well. So he's a special guest for all four Australian shows. So it, it was different in in a way that you know, we didn't have songs and stories, but they got sound check. They also got each of them got a free pair of tickets to the show, which you know no no one else along the tour got to go to see the Gene Simmons band and Ace Fraley. For right. free, we Which worked that awesome. out, you awesome. know, into the ball. And you know, yeah, I mean, it, it, it just it worked out. And I think ninety five percent of the people were happy. I know there were a couple people who were like, "Well, there's no songs and stories," and they were pissed off. But it just was, unfortunately, it was not possible with the way that the promoters had the tour date set up. And you know, we had moved the dates. The promoters moved the dates going way back. We were supposed to be in Australia at the start of the year, right? And the promoters right. moved the dates until just now when we did them, and we had no control over that either because you know flying to australia it's a 14 and a half hour journey so when the promoter said we have to move the dates we had to move the vault and and again adelaide uh we had a q a in adelaide because it was it was not the day of the show it was the day after the show at the hotel so that was different but everyone who was in adelaide went the night before for free and saw soundcheck and got to see the show cool. and then the next three in a row were literally come in you hang out you watch the soundcheck 
you get to, you know, you get free tickets to the show. You're in the show before anybody else. So that's the other thing, too. They were all general admission, so everyone got perfect right by the stage. Oh, and the bonus of Australia, every single person who bought a vault and their guest got invited to come up on stage and sing. Oh, nice. Time. That's very cool. So the girls came up and did Do You Love Me? The guys came up and did I Love It Loud? And at the end of the show, everyone came up and did Rock and Roll All Night. And Ace joined Gene and the band for Rock and Roll All Night. So it was, I mean, it was, it was pretty, it, you know, it was different, but it was amazing. And then everyone, obviously, you got your, you know, your time with Gene, you got your autographs with Gene, your photo op with Gene. That was regular. Um, but yeah, those are the, the that was, it, 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 it's different. And I got to tell you, Sweetwater will be different. Mm -hmm. well, that's probably Gene calling me because I haven't said GeneSimmonsVault.com in two minutes. <laughs> um. I'm actually locked in his basement right now. This isn't my house. <laughs> Out of the basement. Um, and, and so every everyone will be different. You know, Sweetwater, which is coming up on the uh, the sixth and seventh of this month, is a two day event where you go in the recording studio with him on the first day. You get to record. You get to play. You know, see him recording bass parts. You get to see that. And then the second day is songs and stories and the vault. And there's a dinner in there as well. So again, it's a different experience. The cruise will be more traditional. It'll be on the Sunday night. It'll be songs and stories. Plus then the handing out of the vault, Spinnaker Lounge for the people who buy the vault fresh on the cruise. And then LA and Vegas are looking to be, you know, uh, not back where we started, but kind of like, hey, look at this amazing year. And here we are. We're back in LA. Here's songs and stories. Here's handing out the vaults. Same thing for Vegas. We're going to be at Kiss Monster Mini Golf in Vegas on December 2nd with Tommy Thayer as the guest. Yes, so that's going yes. to be... Super cool. We got two different people who have agreed to come to the LA one. Uh, two legendary guitarists who are not who are deeply influenced by Kiss. Uh, Andrew knows who's one. Who, Andrew smiling because he knows who one of them is. Because I set it up. Uh, I set it up to. I put you guys together. Up. Exactly. So so that's gonna be that's gonna be fairly awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean it's just it's it's been it's been a great year. It's been every one of them's been different. You know, we've been lucky to have surprise guests. We've been lucky to have people, guests that people were, were, were expected there. We, we were lucky to have people like Vinnie Vincent and Peter Chris, which people told me at the beginning of this, there's no way you can get. My goal at the, at the start of this was to make sure that everyone had the greatest experience of their life when they came to the event. And if I could bring everybody and anybody from the KISS universe in to, at, at different pl places as surprises or bonuses, that's what I wanted to do. And... W was able to do it, which was which well, people said well, you're never going to get Vinny, well, you're never going to get Peter. And well, Jason went. To... Jason went when Vinny was there, and, and you yep. know I I was a little uh, jealous, a little bit or, or envious that he got. But I, I tell you something, when it was just like Gene there, and and obviously you were there too, and it, it was very cool. But it was just Gene, and Gene was the guest, and it was just you and Gene. Something about that was really special. I yeah, I, mean, I have a, a a long relationship with Gene, and. Uh, that was the best time I've, I've ever had with him one on one. Yeah, I mean that's that that's exactly it. The spe the the events didn't need special guests. Yes. That's the, that's the reality of it. You know, and at the beginning there were some people who when we started bringing in guests there were people who were like well, why aren't there special guests? And I was like you're kind of missing the point. If you're not there to see Gene and to hear these songs and stories from Gene, then you're in the wrong place. The special yes. guests were always like bonuses just like when you went to every vault event if you look at your original receipt for the vault it does not say that there's going to be food it doesn't yeah. say that there's going to be drinks we 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 tried to do along the way gene's philosophy with with uh, with what he does and what he told me is look give them more than they expect so it we tried to do that along the way was we always try to do a little bit more than what was expected and yeah some people some special guests showed up in places some other places, you didn't get a special guest, but you got like really intimate moments. And, you know, some of the songs and stories, there was stuff that came out that I would have never expected Gene the stories to tell. And he did. And, you know, hopefully everyone who got you, you got to spend you got what you you got what you wanted, which was to spend time with Gene and to see and meet him on a different level than anything else. Any other experience. Well, what yes. people what people don't know, and then, and then I'll let you jump in here, Jason, what people don't know is how kind of above and beyond you went. I, I was in the Toronto vault experience, and I remember we stopped at, what was it, Tim Hortons before we got to the event, and you're passing out donuts and stuff to the fans that were online first. <laughs> so a anybody that's going to say, oh, well, Keith this and Keith that, I'm like, the guy reached into his own pocket 
and was given food to fans that oh, were that, in that front. Your wallet. I think I stole your wallet first. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. That, that's, no, yeah. That's little, you know, but that's the, the, we wanted. My my job is to make everybody happy, yeah. and, and that you know, and so you're standing in line. You show up two and a half hours early for an event, even though we said don't come till this time. And we drive by and we see that there are 35, 40 people standing in line. Why not stop and get a box of donuts and you know, and a case of water and hand it out to people? Just trying to make sure that everyone felt welcome and felt happy and felt like, you know, we all get to go to lots of meet and greets. We all get to do lots of cool things. This one had to be special. This was, you was, you want, we wanted you to leave going. That was the, that was well worth every penny awesome. and look at this vault. And that was the best experience I've ever had. And haters going to hate as they say. Haters That's right. Going to hate. Yeah. You can't stop that. Trust. Andrew yeah. has a lot of haters. So yeah, I do. <laughs> And they're mostly his relatives, but which is kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man, no, all, all bullshit aside, you know, the haters can hate for all I want. The things that I've done this year alone, does it, it the haters, they mean nothing to me. And, and, here's, and here's the reality. The people who are negative were never going to get the ball. They, were, they, they couldn't afford yeah. it, and that's fine. It was never designed for everybody. So you got people who would go online and, and bitch, moan, and complain, and then the comment was, well, did you buy the vault? Did you go to the experience? It was like, I would never buy that. And but the people that did really enjoyed it. it. It's like and the people who did loved it and, and came, back, came away, and you know, for the most part came away going, wow, that was really, that was well worth my time. So. Well, Andrew and I definitely both know a lot of people who have purchased the vault, yeah. and I yeah. personally don't know anyone that went to the experience that did not enjoy it. Right. And, yeah. and you know, there have been a couple people who had whatever issues at the event, and as I say to everyone at the event, I go, let me know because I can fix it. And, you know, there have been people after the fact who had, who was like, oh, this, that, and the other thing. And we've worked behind the scenes with Gene to do extra things to make sure those people are happy as well. Yeah. There's only been, and I have a list, there's 12 people on it, there's only been a few people who you just can't make happy. Wow. And and that's it. I mean, it's it's literally, you know, in, in a world, in thousands of people that we dealt with, if you got 12 people who, they're just unhappy people, there's nothing you can do. We've, you know, we, yeah. and we've gone above and beyond to try and help. And it's like, I think that gen, overall, I think it was a good experience for everybody. And I hope that people walked away with it going, wow, that was, that was amazing. Hey, um, uh, I just thought of another question because um, obviously Kiss the End of the Road Tour was kind of the worst kept secret within the fan community. <laughs> really? Were there ever any talks to have you kind of shadow the Kiss Tour and maybe do five or six vaults at some of the cities for people? There, uh, I, um, I will tell you this. There are some vaults left. I will tell you that next year, there, once the dates are announced, we have been having some conversations and – there's potential to do some stuff. Oh, it would not be good. on. The, it won't be on the grand scale. Like you won't have songs and stories. You won't have that kind of thing. But you know, for instance, Madrid. We had a lovely breakfast in Madrid, and we had 20 buyers come, and then we capped it at that. And they got to hang out with Gene, and there's a Q and A, and they got to eat, and they all got their vaults and photos and autographs. Potentially. With the Kiss tour, if there are some off days and G and Gene agrees to it, we might be able to do that. Um, so you know, there's 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 kind of, it's it's not over yet. There aren't a lot of vaults. I mean, there there aren't enough vaults for us to go. Yeah, for the next three years, no, because we only made five thousand and we've sold a good a good portion of them. So with what we have left, if there's if if it works out with Gene's schedule, we'd love to do stuff going into 2019. Mm -hmm. And then you could see Kiss, you know, in, in 2019 yes. a bunch well, of times. Listen, yeah, the the idea of getting to see Kiss for free uh, repeatedly, you know, as a, as a fan since 1977, it's okay with me, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I certainly, you know, not since the re – I did – in the reunion tour, I did see eight or nine shows in a row, but I did have to pay for those. So, you know, to maybe see that many this time around would be pretty all right. Yeah. yeah I mean, we'll, we'll – you know, we'll see. I, I It's – it's going to be a, it's a massive undertaking. So I can't, you know, I can't assume anything. We would love to, to continue, but you know, right now my focus is Sweetwater and the cruise and then De December one in LA, December two in Vegas. And then we'll see where it goes from there. You know, I, I'm, I, 2018 went above and beyond what I could have dreamed. So we'll, you know, 
we'll finish off strong and then we'll see if 2019 has anything for us. Well, let's, let's, let's just, um, if, if, if the, the tour wasn't happening, let's just say uh, let's hypothetically here and you get to the end of these four vault events and you have X amount of vaults left. Was there a contingency plan of what to do? No, it's just, no, I mean, it, it never was. It was always, we have 2018. We have Gene available to us for 2018. I'm under contract to the end of 2018. Gene signed a deal. So that 2008, 2017 was the year of planning and creating and manufacturing and making the ball. 2018 was the year of executing the experiences and going around the world and Gene taking the ball to people. Right. Um, if we had run out of vaults in the middle of 2018, then that would have been the end of the road then. You know what I mean? It was, it, there was never... It was, these are the amount of vaults we're making, and these are the cities we're announcing, and let's see what happens. Um, so, no, there's there's never been a CG plan. There's never been a, a B plan. You know, people are always asking about a cut-down version of the vault. That's not it, the way it's contracted. We're not doing that. You know, we've, we've got these vaults, and once the vaults are gone, they're gone. You know, that's that's literally the, that's, that's the end of the road for the vault, is 5,000 made, 5,000 sold, you know, good. And again, if that if that goes into 2019, great. Got it. Got it. So, of all the experiences that you've done, um, do you have any particular standout moments that you can discuss <laughs> publicly? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of standout <laughs> moments that I, I I can't discuss. Right. There's a lot of uh, I, I mean, you know, Ace having Ace along quite a bit. It was just a blast. Wait, you gotta, of, you, I, I gotta just jump in because you gotta tell, you gotta tell the little brief phone conversation you had with Ace when you were asking him to do that because you told that to me and it kills which, me every time. Which, which one? When you're asking him, Ace, what are you, what are you doing? I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not, you know, I, 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 it's a year, it's a blur, so I'm not really so remembering the specifics. You, you were telling me about, and I think it was either the Miami or the St. Louis vault, and you were saying uh, you were trying to get these these events planned, and you were like, Ace, what are you doing on such and such date? And Ace was like, nothing. And, yeah. and, and, Ace, Ace, you want, Ace, you want to go to Miami? Sure. What are you doing on this date? Nothing. <laughs> All right, so, so should we pick you up? Yeah, swing by. I mean, he, he's he's fantastic. You know, and it's it's the nicest moments on the tour have been seeing Ace and Gene like just sit like reminiscing. You yeah. know, driving in the car from the hotel to the events, and them just telling these old stories. And you see that camaraderie and like why you know how much they really do, especially now that Ace is sober, they really do enjoy each other's company. There's been a lot of laughs, and I, no, I mean the standout standout moments. You know, it's Again, seeing seeing these people together that you never thought you'd see together again, and 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 this is corny, but you know people said to me, "What's the greatest thing about it? Must be traveling around the world? That must have been great." No, that that's not fun. Um, yeah. The greatest, it really isn't. You know, hey, what's your commute uh, on an average day? Your commute is twenty minutes. Okay, so let's pretend your commute on Monday is twenty minutes. On Tuesday it's twenty minutes. Wednesday it's fourteen and a half hours by plane. And you got to figure out everything when you get there and go, uh, where's the water? Where's the cottage cheese? Right, right. Where can I buy a fan and some Sharpies? Yeah, you know, fan. What, do you, what do you mean you don't have Splenda in Madrid? What do you mean? Well, I Splenda, you know, all of those things in the, in, in the middle of the night. And of course, not speaking the language where you're like, yeah, Splenda. You're holding up a packet of Splenda that you brought from America that TSA thought might be cocaine. So they <laughs> opened it on the, you know, in your dose. I need to, and the guy, the guy at the, you know, at the Madrid 7-Eleven is just looking at me like waiting to just, you know, for, for a boulder run by and take me. I, you know, but <laughs> the best moments, the best moments in all honesty, uh, my, my boss, Brian Hay, says that we are Santa's elves and I get to be the head elf. And the best moments have been on the whole thing is seeing the look on the fans' faces when they're with Gene. So yeah. when they come up to Gene and they get that moment and some of them, some of them met him before. Some of them have never met him before. And that moment of joy, which transforms 50-year-old men into young boys in 1977. Sure and, does. You know, that, that, that moment, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to be jaded. I've been very lucky. I've spent two years with Gene Simmons. The first time I drove to his house when I was potentially going to do this job, 
you know, super nervous and super shaky and walking into that office and everything, you know, every time I see a fan get their vault and I see that it reminds me of that feeling and how cool that is that we, you know, that he not only do you get this moment, but that he's doing it because he wants to do it and that you, you know, le like you legitimately get to meet your hero and he's funny and he's personable and you get this cool thing. And that, that's been, that's been some of the amazing moments just watching the tear people cry people have the the most heartbreaking stories of surviving cancer and you know or their friend dying or and, and i just just you it's just amazing and that moment of joy or that moment of excitement when they meet gene being able to witness that again and again and again and again in many languages in many countries has been that's the coolest moment of the whole thing that's awesome that's awesome yeah yeah wow uh, well, cause I, I mean, I, I've been been with Gene the last couple of weeks doing these uh, these soda events. And when I first started coming around, it was like, oh, how many things can I get signed? How many pictures can I get? And I don't want any of that stuff anymore. What I love is I like seeing the kids and the people like connecting with Gene. Like that's the best feeling for me. And then I get to capture it all, you know, on video for Gene, which is which is awesome. And, and you know, to he doesn't know my name, but he just calls me Paul McCartney, which is fine by me. I don't care. But like, if he sees something that he wants, he's like, "Hey, Paul McCartney, come here, shoot that, or or get this." Or, it's fun. It's just fun for me. So, <laughs> you well, laugh at it, but it's fun. I, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm just wondering how many more times are you gonna tell us, our viewers, that Gene calls you Paul McCartney? Yeah, here I'll tell you. This will be the last <laughs> time I say. Hey, Jason, I heard a rumor that Gene calls Andrew Paul McCartney. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> Well, so I, I when on the internet I read it or something. I got to the first event at Seven Eleven, and uh, I I did like a sweep of the crowd, and which ended up in the video. So I did a sweep of the crowd, and what you didn't hear was the audio. There were fans that were going, "Hey, it's Paul, Mc it's the Paul McCartney kid," and people actually said that at Seven Eleven. Well, yeah, Andrew, if you tell them enough, they'll. <laughs> hey man, it's on it's on my vault now. It's true. It's on my <laughs> vault now. It's the Paul McCartney kid. You know, the, the amazing thing, Andrew, is somewhere down the line, hopefully, you'll meet Paul McCartney, and then he'll turn to you and goes, you look a fucking thing like me. <laughs> That'll be the end of that. <laughs> you look more like Pete Best. Now get out of here. <laughs> he actually, uh, Gene actually said we were... We were just we were just finishing up one of the last events, and and we're driving back in the car, and he goes, he goes, you're an impersonator of uh, you're you're an impersonator who impersonated Paul McCartney, and I go, what? He goes, there was this guy in the '60s, he couldn't sing, but he looked like Paul McCartney, so they gave him a record deal, and look, that's who you look like. <laughs> Pulled some ran I, I don't remember the guy's name, but he had it like on his phone, and you know, it's it, it, it's funny to get that kind of Weird. you know that back and forth with him because he's he's great, he's actually yeah. great. Yeah, no, he's a lot. He's a lot of, you know, he's a taskmaster at times, but in the fun moments, it's. A, I mean, it's a lot of laughs. He's a lot of fun. So uh, there was um, kind of a rumor slash thing going around that there was the curse of the vault. <laughs> so, and, and I just wanted okay. to touch. I wanted to touch on this a little bit because people don't realize what happens when you're essentially on the road. When we were together in Toronto, there were roads being closed because of. Uh, you know, a 5K run. Yeah. Uh, just do, talk a little bit about what there, can go there, wrong, there, will go wrong. Yeah, there are so many moments. I mean, in my so Miami, we get to Miami, and everything's fine, and we're, we, you know, we go the night before. We see the venue. It's going to be great. We're at the hotel. We wake up in the morning. The streets are all closed for a marathon. And we're like, well, I'm sorry, what? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's a great Miami marathon. And we're like, nobody told us anything. So we have to find a way to go out the back of the hotel down like a little embankment and have a car and, you know and same thing in sweden we're, we're in stockholm and a lot of a lot of running around the vault we're, we're in stockholm and the same thing the streets are all closed for this a massive marathon and so the, they're playing the band's playing this amusement park and we're like how are we going to get to the amusement park so there's a boat and the boat comes and i'm there with ryan and jeremy and phil and and brent from the and it's it's a pontoon boat it's two seats by two seats, and it's inflated. And we all look at each other, and we're like, she's not getting on his boat. There's no way he's getting on his boat. And so, we t so Ryan takes a picture and sends it to, to Gene, and Gene's like, I'm not getting on that I'm boat. Like <laughs> and so we all take the boat over to the amusement park, and then, of course, obviously, like 5 or 6 o'clock at night, the streets reopen, and, they, and Gene's able to get in a car and get to the amusement park. But it's a, a, a ride that literally the day before took five minutes by a car, 
took him 45 minutes because of the because of the tail end of the marathon by a car to go a different route. Um, we joke about the curse of the ball because there have been things that just happen at like. You know, Japan, Tokyo, Japan. This is last year doing the doing the promo tour. So I'm in Tokyo, and DHL lost the two vaults that were supposed to show on television, and that we're supposed to have um, for this massive press conference with Epic Rights and everything. Lost wow, them. Wow. So at four o'clock in the morning, I am at a DHL facility in Tokyo that looked like something. It looked like something out of like Black Rain or Big Trouble in Little China. It was just or Blade Runner. It's this. It's it's the biggest room I've ever been in with rows and rows of stuff. And I'm pretty sure the Ark of the Covenant was in there and all this other stuff. And <laughs> That's where it went. Yes. And, and, there's this, and there's this guy and he go and I said, okay. So it, I said, here's the manifest. It shows that the vault is in this facility. He goes, uh, vault, uh, not here. <laughs> I said, no, 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 sir. See, it says right here on the tracking that the vault is, is actually in, you, you know, do you know this person's name? Oh, he's here. Okay. So can we find him? Oh, vault not here. You know, and so I go back to the hotel and I'm, and I'm like, oh, there's, there's nothing I can do. I'm like, literally. Gene Simmons vault.com. Gene Simmons vault.com. Vault. So Gene, I'm like, there's, there's nothing I can do. Gene's, you know, Gene's going to be pissed. And it's about 25 minutes before the press conference. And I get a knock on my door in my hotel, and the sweatiest Japanese man I've ever met in my entire life <laughs> is standing there with a luggage cart with the two vaults sitting on it, dripping. And literally, the guy was dripping. He's like, vault, <gasps> vault, <laughs> vault. <laughs> and I'm like, let's go. So we take the vaults, and we litter, and we run, and we go down, and we get to the conference, and we're, we're, we're pushing this thing through. And there are people flying left and right, and we're rolling down, and we get to the press conference, and we sneak in, and we throw them up on stage, and I give the guy some money, and he takes the card away. And then they go, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Gene Shimons. And Gene walks out. <laughs> And the vaults are there, and like, and, and he's like, oh. and afterwards he goes, that looked really good with the vaults being there. <laughs> he didn't realize that less than 60 seconds before he walked onto the stage, there were no vaults, you know. <laughs> so we what joke a... about it, the, 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 you know, the, the, the curse of the vault. Dallas, the vaults never showed up. We did Dallas television with the book, the action figure, the coin, because the vaults never showed up, and literally – we did the last Dallas television appearance. 20 minutes later, the, the hotel calls and goes, Mr. Ralgar, your vaults are here. <laughs> 20 minutes. It was like they, two days late, two days and 20 minutes too late. Yeah. There's but, a, yeah. Th th there's a funny story. And I think you, it was during the New York city press tour where uh, you had a vault and you had a bet going with Gene. Do you remember, you remember the story? Tell, this is. Yeah, so we, were down, we were down in wall street um, doing, I think Jim Cramer's show either Jim Cramer or Mar Maria Bartiromo doing one of the money shows. And we had to get from Wall Street uptown, I think, to do the Howard Stern wrap-up show. And Wall Street is, it, you know, there's all, you can't just walk through Wall Street carrying a giant box. There, there's all this security. When you pull in the car, they actually, they un underneath it with a mirror. And there's all these steps going up. So we were, the Terry, our publicist, said, um, okay, guys, we have five minutes. If we don't get to the car in five minutes, then we're gonna not we're gonna miss it. We're not gonna be able to do this thing and blah blah blah. And Gene looks at me and I at the you know first part of the year there were there were there were only two vaults and I carried them everywhere myself. There was no case, there was no road case, there was no crew. It was literally me with the handles sweating carrying these vaults. And so Gene looks at me and goes, yeah, we're gonna get that to the car in five minutes. And I looked at Gene and I said, You wanna bet? He goes, Yeah, I'll bet you a hundred dollars. And I said, Okay. And you know, mo nothing motivates like money. And I <laughs> and I literally picked up the vault and ran through the crowds of Wall Street, like literally, just were like a madman. And the people are looking at me, you know, they're all in their nice suits and I'm in my vault leather jacket with my red, and I'm sweating. And I get to the car and I, and I literally get to the car in less than two and a half minutes. And, and, and Gene goes, wow, that was impressive. And I said, where's my hundred bucks? And he looked at me and he reached in his pocket and he pulled out a hundred bucks. I mean, hundred bucks. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 just so many, so many moments like that where you just, you know, you just go, did that really just happen? Right. right. You know, you, you, and as a fan, you're, you you can't believe that it actually, you know, you actually, you you've helped your you've helped your hero facilitate their dreams and and their ideas, which is which is 
super crazy. But so, do you still have that original little drawing that Gene made the vault on, or did Gene keep that? It's somewhere. Because that that to me it is. to it me is. to me when I was thinking about gifts in the vault, if that had been in the vault, would have been the greatest thing ever. That would have been the oh, best yeah, vault gift ever. For sure. Yeah. yeah. No, there, there, there was some original sketches that were in the vault. You know, he, he's, he keeps, he's very good at collecting himself. And there are certain things that he hangs on to. Um, you know, so it, it exists. I'm pretty sure I know where it is. Um, we'll leave it at that for now. Okay. Okay. As the listeners know, uh, 2018 is the the year of the vault. There are four vault experiences left. You can meet Gene at Sweetwater Music. I believe it's in Fort Wayne, Indiana, October. Uh, the first weekend in October, go to GeneSimmonsVault.com. Six and seven. Yep. Go to GeneSimmonsVault.com to see all the information on that. You can actually record a song with Gene Simmons. <clears throat> uh, it, it's going to be awesome. Uh, if you're going on the Kiss Cruise, you can get your vault on the Kiss Cruise. That includes songs so and stories, all the bells and whistles, and everything like that. And we're not going to physically, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. We're not going to physically bring the vault on the cruise. What we're doing with the cruise, because people were saying, well, how am I going to get the vault home? Mm -hmm. So if you buy the, uh, the vault on the Kiss Cruise, Gene will be signing it ahead of time and we'll be filming it and, and photographing it as well to your specifications. On the cruise, you will get the book. Mm -hmm. Gene will sign the book and your two items and you get the photo and you get songs and stories on the cruise. Oh, but cool. your physical vault will be direct shipped to your house. So you don't have to drag it from Miami to wherever to in the wherever. world. Yeah, that's that, that's awesome. But uh, the last two, I guess, proper vault experiences are December 1st and 2nd in Los Angeles. Guests to be announced. Trust me, it's going to be cool. And then December uh, 2nd, I kiss Monster Mini Golf uh, in, in Las Vegas with Tommy Thayer as a special guest. So, but this is a Kiss Collectible show. That's right. So should we put him through the gamut of what we do collectors and ask him his history with yes, yes, yes. his Take merchandise? It and Take all it that away. Stuff? Take it away, Jason. So Keith, if, when we have collectors and people that are KISS fans that, that collect merch and things like that or, or vinyl or whatever they collect, we usually just ask them a few questions like uh, what, what was your introduction to KISS merchandise? You know, what... Sure. So sure. when I was so in 1977, when I was a kid, I was I was 10 years old. 1877. You know, 1977. Not 1877. That's Gene's joke. <laughs> I was the waiter at the Last Supper. No, 1977. <laughs> oh, you look at my yearbook. It's me and Jesus. Um, <laughs> Betsy Ross made a flag. Anyway, no. In in 1977, I was a giant Kiss fan. And I, I, like everyone else, you know, I discovered them through, and I discovered them through Destroyer a year later than I should have. But my parents were super Catholic, so they would not allow even the records. And my godmother showed up on Christmas morning with Destroyer. I've told this story before, and I played it for three days, and then it disappeared. And four or five years later, I'm helping my dad clean out his bar, and there it was, snapped in half behind his bar. Oh, so wow. they would never allow me to have the Kiss collectibles. It was always. But these as uh, were the holy grail. These, as a kid, I wanted the Megos. I had $6 million man. He was the same height. I know Gene. GeneSimmonsVault.com. <laughs> <laughs> they were the same the same height as a $6 million man. And they, and they were cool. But my parents, there was no way in hell I was going to be allowed to get that. The other thing that I wanted was this, which we all wanted the... Kiss Metal Lunchbox. Now, I had a Scooby-Doo Lunchbox and other things. Oh, Andrew, by the way, if you look at my Kiss Metal Lunchbox, you, you notice something's missing. So I know you probably got about eight thermoses. It's so a thermos. I actually don't have a Lunchbox. So I, I really, I, that's a missing piece of my collection. Oh, it, and Andrew, Andrew is a co-host of a collectibles podcast and doesn't have much, you know, many Kiss collectibles. That's not true. That's not I'm true. I'm kidding, man. That's I'm just, kidding. That's, that's just a shame. I but know. This, this, so no, this, I mean, obviously, I wanted this as a kid. And so okay. as a kid, I remember seeing friends of mine who had the Mego dolls, friends of mine who had the lunchbox, and that's what I wanted. My parents were like, no, no, sorry. They let me get, you know, I got the $6 million man. I got the Star Wars. Look through the figure. eye of the $6 million uh, man. Oh, yeah, with the, in the on. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, but they wouldn't let me have the Kiss Collectibles. The first, so those were the first ones that I, I lusted after, if you will, for sure. years because I, I, that I wanted it wasn't until 96 when I was a grown-ass man 
uh, when <laughs> when McFarlane put out their line of figures. Yeah, yeah. That I went out in '96 and bought. You know, I bought all the three variants, two sets of each, one to open, one not to open. Uh, and then, at, you know, in the, in recent years, at the start of this project, I bought this guy on eBay. And then I've I've had the I've had the I collect metal lunch boxes. I probably get about forty five in my collection. So I've had the Kiss lunch box for at least at least fifteen years. It was that and the Evil Knievel were like the holy grails when I started collecting lunch boxes. Um, and then you know over the process of the project, some in, incredibly nice fans mailed me Ace and mailed me Peter. Um, you know Paul's the only one who's, who's missing from the shelf right now. Uh, I had one that was pretty broken up, and it and it fell recently, and the dog got to it. So you know, those were the that's that's my foray. It wasn't it wasn't about buying it; it was about wanting the lunchbox and wanting the figures. Sure, sure. Is there something that that you still want as a collector? Is there another item that you still want? Did you not see that there's no thermos in here? Oh. He needs a thermos. <laughs> Notice the okay. missing. The, it's a. It's not. A, it's it needs a thermos. <laughs> I mean, you get look. You know, I'm I'm 51 years old. I have two small children. Uh, I have a wife who puts up with a lot of stuff. Um, my days of collecting stuff, I I, I have 19,000 CDs in my personal collection. So that's kind of the only place where I still collect and and buy. I obviously have every Kiss record, everything you know, that I can get my hands on, all the solo stuff. So I, I guess the thermos, if there was one thing, it would be that that's missing. It's the thermos and a non-dog mangled Paul Mego. Okay. 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 Yeah. See, I, I do. I, I I was fortunate. I do have a set of, of Magos. I have the McFar. I have all the the lines of of the McFarland toys because I'm a huge action figure collector. So whenever there was Kiss action figures, I was like, sign me up, fam. Yeah, yeah. And, and they and and to be fair, they've all been really good. Yes. I mean, the Meg yes. amazing. McFarland did a great job um, with you know with the lines and and of course the one that you got in the vault is pretty solid as well. So. Oh yeah, the Gene is great. The we Gene spent is a really yeah, we spent nine months putting that together. Gene wanted to make sure that it was absolutely perfect. And and Mezco out of New York did an amazing job getting all the details completely right on that. Um, and I, and that was one of the, to, to, to brag, that was one of my original ideas was I said, hey, Gene, you've done a lot of action figures, but no non-makeup ones. And he's like, you're right. And so to, to, you know, to actually, next to my Megos, have... The non-makeup gene is a pretty cool thing. Yeah, I tell you I what, do. I would buy if if McFarlane went back and did some more Kiss. I would buy a '92 Revenge era, you know, concert so stage set yeah, so with yeah. with the Statue of Liberty and non-make. Oh my God, I'd love that. You ne but you never and look. That's the beauty about this tour is who knows what potentially might come out this year. Yeah, and next year. I mean, the the merchandising. I'm sure. I'm sure the merchandising machine is at on full tilt right now at work. There could be all kinds of great stuff that that would be amazing to see. Yep. Merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. <laughs> I just want to point out, Keith, you said you were married with two young children and your days of collecting are over. I, too, am married, and I have a 12-year-old daughter, and I collect so much kiss crap that we actually bought a new house that was three ah. times the size of our old house just so I could have a basement. <laughs> to collection. Yeah. Wow. Your, your wife is... Far more patient. She gets the mine. two thousand square feet upstairs, and I get the thousand square feet downstairs to put all my junk in. So <laughs> that's fairly amazing. Yeah, no, I have I have my garage outside, which we refinished, and uh, as my son calls it, it's the clubhouse because we like girls in. It's not a man cave. Um, <laughs> and it, but it, I just I've run out of I've run out of wall space. You know, the other thing yeah. I collect and have since I was young is photo ops. I have I've been taking pictures with famous people since I was in my you know in my teens. And so I've got every wall in that is covered with eight by tens of me with everyone from Frank Sinatra to the Rolling Stones to a very young Sinead O'Connor. I mean, so, yeah, that that hasn't stopped either. But Facebook is a place where you can now put all that stuff. Right. right. So uh, how long have you worked in the music business, your entire adult life? Or? Most, most of, yeah, I, I basically I started when I was um, I was in college and it, uh, I went to Emerson College in Boston to get an acting degree because, you know, I wanted to have something useless. Um, not, no, 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 you know, no dig against Emerson, but an acting degree, you know, I say, people say, oh, how do you know how valuable your degree is? I go, it depends on where it is in the house. I'm like, right here on the wall is my wives from NYU. It's framed in a gold leaf frame. I said, mine from Emerson is laminated and we use it as a, sometimes as a placemat. <laughs> you just, so, so I, I, you know, 
I love her. What was your original question? Well, how long have you worked in the music business? So anyway, so yeah, so six months before graduating from Emerson, I was working on the radio and I was offered a job as a merchandiser for Capitol Records. Yeah. And uh, in Boston. And I would hang posters and go to record stores when posters and record stores were things and pick up bands from the airport. And so I was I was twenty and I did that for a good nine years nine year stint. And then I went and did pursued my acting, my voiceovers, my stand up comedy, my sketch comedy. And then it was a return, you know, two years ago to get a tap on the shoulder after 20 years out of the music business to come back. I was also a writer in the middle, working for different people as a music editor and so forth, different magazines and, so, and such. So, yeah, so yeah. Cool. I went I went from retail, I, you know, as you know, at 19 years old, working in, in record stores and then managing record stores and then to advertising for a distribution company. And now I, I'm head of sales at at a vinyl one stop in Nashville. Nice. So I sell, you know, I work for the largest pressing plan in, in the United States, oldest and largest pressing plan in the United wow. States and, and yeah, sell I mean, vinyl every day. So. It's one of those things where, the, you know, the music, if, if you're lucky and, and it's and music is your passion, it, it brings you in. You know, when I went to work for Flint Media as a, as a writer, I went as the comedy writer. Someone saw me on stage at the, at the comedy store and said, you're funny. Do you want to write comedy for Larry Flint? And I say, sure, you know, and then six months into that, they're like, hey, you used to be in the music business. You want to be the music editor and do all these celebrity interviews. And I sat down with Eddie Van Halen. Nice. And Ice Cube and Ace, you know, and it was just like, it's one of these things where it just kind of, it it keeps pulling you back in to take yeah. a quote from the worst Godfather movie. You know, no matter what you do, you keep getting pulled it back in. And it's not a bad place to be, you know. It's really not. It's really not. You know, yeah, I'm waiting years. for Jason to hire me is what I'm waiting for. Oh. <laughs> Uh, if I could hire you, Andrew, I'd hire you. So, I'm not in charge of hiring. So, we'll get on it. Well, all right, get I'll on, say something to somebody. Get, say, something, get ignored, say something so. to somebody, and then they'll forget. People will talk to your people and their people. Yeah, yeah. Not just face people. And so, well, do we have any loose ends we want to tie up? Anything that we've forgotten to mention about the vault? Uh, uh, just head on to GeneSimmonsVault.com. If you're on the fence, please get off the fence and please do this. I've been saying it since the beginning of the year. It was one of Time's the coolest out. things. It was the coolest things I've done, and uh, and, and <clears> I, <throat> I paid for it. So don't say I'm saying it's cool because I didn't pay. I paid just like everybody else, and uh, it, it was the most fun. And it was very cool to connect with all the, the people at the Vault Experiences. So uh, if you can do it, do it. Yeah, and and if you've already done it and you want to come back and be part of the party, we do the frequent buyer program. It's you and a guest. You know, and you get to come, you get the photo, you get to watch songs and stories, you get to be part of it. And, you know, it's, it's yeah, and, and just, I mean, just in general, if I may, just a big thank you to everyone who came and saw and enjoyed the vault this year. It's oh, just, yes. you know, it was an, an amazing year. A lot of amazing people, you know, some, some just memories I'll never forget, some places you never think you're going to be in. And, you know, thank you to everybody who basically saw what this thing was about and embraced it and enjoyed it and, 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 you know, and got to spend time with Gene and thank you everybody for, for that. Cause that allowed me to spend this the last two years with Gene as well. So, well, you've done a, you've done a great job, Keith. Hell yes. and, uh, hell yes. thank you. You know, That's why we had so. you back because, you know, when we had you on the first time, it was kind of you looking forward to the year and now here we are uh, finishing yep. up and it, it was a, it was a, a gangbuster year, in my opinion. Yeah. No, it was a, it was a hell of, it really was a hell of a ride. And like I said, I hope everyone, at the end of it, when they look back, they go, "That was worth my time. That was worth yes. my money. Hell I had yes. a really good, you know, I had a really good time, and I would do it again." Hell yes. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, if that's anybody, do we have anything else to say? No. Just no. GeneSimmonsVault.com. Want to thank GeneSimmonsVault.com. Gene Gene yeah. Want to thank you, Keith, for coming on again. Yeah, we man. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys. Listen, thank you guys. Thanks for the support. Yeah. And uh, Jason, are you going on the cruise? I'm not going on the cruise. Uh, I, 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 I I don't know. Maybe yes. maybe if it is me, you and Terry will hang out. Yeah, but how? Are you, what are you going to get in as Terry's guest? What are you doing? You're sneaking in a lifeboat well, now. Well, no, you, I mean there there are people who have spare rooms that that I, I may jump in on. I, I know year. who you're staying with, and with a little bit of luck, you'll be on the cruise. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Thanks, Keith. And uh, we'll we'll see you all on see the next, the next one. one. Stop it. Uh -huh.